Was the question audible to all? No. No. The gentleman uh, reminding me that I'd said that a belief in God would in, entail a belief, or a belief in the, let's call it for now, the Christian God, the, the loving uh, creator God, would involve submitting yourself to permanent surveillance supervision before you were born and after you were dead. Uh, reminds me again that um, we are rule-bound as it is by matters such as gravity and the laws of physics. Uh, and he says, what do I make of that? Well, the laws of gravity don't apply to you after you're dead, uh, whereas the laws of uh, the Christian God do, or the Muslim God do. That would be the first distinction. The second is that there are, there are indeed laws from which no one's exempt, but they don't require a permanent intrusion into your privacy or a permanent verdict upon your personal behavior or the threat that nothing you do uh, will ever be exempted from, from a judgment. So those are as different from, those are as arbitrary compared to the laws of physics, I think, as anything could be. It's just two different senses of the word law. The question for me would rather be, this being the case, why do I care? Why do I, so to speak, why do I bother? That's a very good question. It also doesn't have any conclusive answer. What if it's random? Then why, why be interested? Right over here. Karen. Yeah, um, I'm invited to be unpleasant at uh, the expense of Ayn Rand. <laughs> and, and, and objectivism. Well, that's easy. Um, well, the, the novels, first. I mean, as I, I keep trying to say that, you know, in my view, there's more morality in a novel by George Eliot than there is in any of the four Gospels, or, or the four of them put together. Um, I care very much about literature as the, as the place where the real dilemmas, ethical dilemmas are met and, and dealt with. So to have novels as transcendently awful as uh, The Shrug and The Fountain Man sort of undermines my project. Um, and then, though I, I have some respect for the virtue of selfishness, a collection of essays, um, and I've, I've argued about them with um, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, as a matter of fact. Um, by the way, a state Federal Reserve Bank is not part of the libertarian program. <laughs> Though Mr. Greenspan seems a bit iffy about this self-evident proposition. Um, I don't think there's any need to have essays advocating selfishness among human beings. I don't know what your impression has been, but some things require no further reinforcement. You know, the, Lillian, Lillian Hellman was once in her declining years on, uh, talking at some campus and she would you know, peer out over the crowd with her very thick dark glasses and uh, there was a squawking question from the, somewhere in the back said, Ms. Hellman, why haven't you endorsed gay rights? And Lillian Hellman sort of blearily ple peered again through and drew herself up and said, well, I wonder what word I'm allowed to use in this august company. I'll quote her directly then. She said, the forms of fucking do not require my endorsement. <laughs> <clears throat> I wasn't that much of a fan of Miss Hellman. She could be a real bitch. Um, but, but I thought that said it more or less all. So to have a book strenuously recommending that people be more self-centered, seems to me, as the Anglican Church used to say in its critique of Catholicism, a work of super erogation. It's, it's too strenuous. Let's open it up uh, to others, and let's start with Jim Peters. Okay. Um, well, I think, finally, I disagree with you, but um, it's been a delightful afternoon. Thank and you. You are the most pleasant person dealing with unpleasant things that I, I think I've ever seen, so I think you have a gift for that. Um, I'm just trying to work out if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> I will try uh, to articulate one point of agreement, which I think you're absolutely um, dead 
right to possess clearly many stark and awful things that could be done in the name of religion. And I think you, you've made a lovely case for that. Maybe that's the wrong word. You've made a compelling case for that. Um, I think my objection to you is going to take two different routes finally. But I think you would also, being an honest person, admit that many dark things have been done in the name of man and in the name of reason. And thus, I, I suspect that the kind of argument you're constructing against religion is going to come back and leave you with really no basis to uphold the, the ethic of reason that you want to, um, to uphold, though I, I suspect it. I also think if, if you want what I think you're calling evidence uh, or religion, which I think I agree with you is not there in the sense that you are looking for it, but I don't think in your world you're going to find evidence, really, for the ethic that you're defending that I, in many ways, agree with. So I'd like to know, I think, two things. If, if it's not the case that if religion, in your mind, is such a negative thing because of the often atrocious track record that it has in history, if based on that, um, you're not left one with really having to say the same thing about reason. And so with the French Revolution and the rational program of social cleansing we've seen since the Enlightenment, it seems to me that that though I admire your your view of tolerance, that you don't have anywhere in your own worldview to I, I hope, I think I could relay that response, but I'm hoping it was, it was audible to all good. You have a splendidly caring voice, Professor. Well, from the philosophical pessimist point of view, the, 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 the darkest suspicion is the one I began with, um, or it's located near there, um, that God is the creation of man, right? God created, man created God, as an image, not the other way around. Consider the implications of this. They're just as bad as the other way around. What kind of God creates the kind of psyche and body that we have and the readiness to chauvinism and panic and the cruelty that we manifest and the fact that our prefrontal lobes are so small and our adrenaline glands are much too big and our urinogenitary arrangements so, con so conducive to obscenity and so forth. Well... <coughs> The same is true if it's man doing the creating. Monsters may well be created that way too. There's no way around that. You're quite right. Uh, I gave the instance of North Korea because I saw there a metamorphosis from what had at one point been a very Spartan uh, communist atheist party state with a very strong leader cult, long, strong leader worship, um, into something that has now become fully devotional as a system. It is, it is now a church, North Korea. Uh, obviously, the figures of Stalin and Hitler are partly created by superstitious people who want to have an absolute leader who they can trust, worship, and thank all the time, and who think that that's pleasurable. This is man-made, as well as man-imposed, of course. And um, Thomas Paine, who is one of my personal... I don't have any icons or heroes I try not to have, but Thomas Paine is, I think, one of the most lucid writers on this, pointed out very early on that when the French Revolution nationalized the church and took its property, it wasn't separating church from state. It was making the state and the church fuse. And so if you have a goddess of reason enshrined in, in the, the church of, no, formerly of Notre Dame, you, all you've done is change the icons around a bit. And you'll soon get the same credulous people making the same pilgrimages. All of this is true, and we're stuck with it. We are a partly rational, poorly evolved species. But... You asked me for the encouraging bit. It would be this. I would wager, I hope I'm not wrong in this, 
everyone in this room understood everything I said this afternoon. They may, I didn't want them to agree. I don't try and make them agree. I don't care if they agree. The hell with you if you don't agree. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, but, but I bet you nothing I said was unintelligible. I mean, what, people could see what it would be like to believe what I believe, I think. Not a very strong claim to make. 